there's a perception that electrical vehicles will not run long and also there's a fear that it might stop midway and what to do you know so that's a perception there's one uh, person uh, Ranjita Ravi, who has all the solutions for these problems. Usually we have it, the fear which we have it. Uh, tell me about your company and your venture. Okay, so my company is called Orha Energies. It's a performance electric vehicle startup and we also do energy systems, right? Uh, the reason we pick performance is uh, what Manjunath was just saying. It's range anxiety, it's performance anxiety, it's charge anxiety, right? When people start with range anxiety, it's like, am I going to get where I need to get? Uh, performance anxiety is, am I even going to go up the flyover when I have two people sitting on the motorcycle, right? And a charge anxiety is, where am I going to charge? What if I run out of charge in the middle of the region? What if I don't have electricity in my house? You know, power is a big problem in India itself, availability of power. So these are the three big problems that we thought we would solve when we started off with Orha Energies. Um, it's just a performance electric motorcycle that you want to ride. Yeah. Tell me, like, in case if I'm a biker, I know, like, now I usually have the power, the torque we always talk about, right? Yes. So uh, how do you solve that problem? Like, you know, like, once you fill it, shut it and go. That's what the, uh, the oldest says. But how do you solve that kind of a problem? See, an electric vehicle is far more simpler than an IC engine, right? An internal combustion engine has so many moving parts. An electric vehicle has a motor, right? It has a battery. It has the belt or the train that will take it to the wheel, and it has the wheel. Very simple, very efficient system. So just by playing around with a few factors and the electronics of these few factors, you get a lot more energy and a lot more power, a lot more torque. And, uh, you know, these can even be, like, played around with. So it gives you a lot of performance. And also the cost factor, like usually uh, EVs are costly because of the uh, battery thing. What is the cost? I mean, is it practical to buy a EV? See, most industry estimates say that if an electric vehicle is about 20 to 30 percent higher than an equivalent category vehicle, then that's a good price for that electric vehicle. So you have to see it that way. So if I want to buy a 300cc motorcycle or a 100cc motorcycle, is the EV equivalent I want to buy 20 to 30 percent more than that? The major reason for this is it's like buying 10 years of petrol up front. Right? When you buy an electric vehicle, you're buying something like 10 years of petrol up front. And this is the sort of thing, thinking that you need to have. But it's a change of thought. It will slowly change. People will change this mentality when more EVs become popular. But until then, a good metric, a good thumb rule to go by is you want to buy an X vehicle, XCC or X category. If it's 20 to 30 percent more and it's an EV, it's a good buy. And also the battery plays uh, the major role. You know, like you know, There's a fear again. Uh, how do you solve that battery problem? You, you have a battery pack and also the charging pack. What are the plans for the battery pack and the charging? So as a company, we believe in swap. We are big advocates of battery swap because we believe that this has a lot of opportunity both in terms of the energy play, in terms of how you can finance batteries, how you can work this entire ecosystem and also of tackling this whole upfront bias, right? The upfront cost bias that people have. So these are certain things that we want to play with and this is where we will use swap itself. So we'll have multiple modules of battery packs in our vehicles and these modules are already deployed in other vehicle systems as well. So. This is where this is whole, um, we are looking at the energy systems part of it. This is the angle we're looking at it. And also tell me more about your product, Mantis it's called, right? So to know more about the product, you'll have to come to Goa to India Bike Week on December 6th and 7th. So we have kept most of the specifications of the vehicle under wraps, all of our development. The only things we are talking about right now is that it will have a top speed of 140 kilometers per hour and a range of 200 kilometers per charge. So these oh, are the uh, that's amazing. 140 and 200 per charge. Uh, okay, that's that's, yeah. that's really good. You know, like you know, that's uh, you know, whoever wants to buy EV, there you are. Buy <laughs> Ranjita's products, which will launch on uh, next year, 2020. 2020. That will be amazing, right? Uh, so, uh, and also, uh, what are your future plans? Like you have, of, of course, the two wheelers coming up, the Montes. Uh, and uh, wha how do you uh, planning to, uh, you know, scale up? You know, like, you know, that's one thing uh, which is just heard about the scaling up, right? Yeah. So for a startup, it's really difficult. So how, what are the plans for that? So, of course, we have plans to scale. We have plans on this product and other products also coming up. The whole battery line is also a big product and the energy play itself is a big line that we're coming up with. But more of this will be revealed after December 6th. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Sanjit. I'm really proud that uh, now you're doing something on the EVs and also very practical uh, uh, vehicles are coming out. You know, that uh, answers most of the uh, problems. And we'll see you in Goa. <laughs>
<laughs> this December. Uh, thanks for talking to uh, Smart Sustain. Thank you.